Hey guys, today I'm talking breastfeeding 101. I'm giving you all the information I wish I would have known when I was a first time mom just starting my breastfeeding journey. If you're new here, I have a two and a half year old named Reese who I breastfed 18 months and a six month old named Everly who we are in the middle of our breastfeeding journey. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Right after your baby is born, you are gonna have colostrum. Colostrum is the first milk. This may actually be leaking a little bit from your breasts in the third trimester. It's very thick, it's full of nutrients, it's a little yellowish. There's not a ton of it, but a little goes a long way because babies are born with itty bitty bellies. Right when your baby's born, they're likely gonna be placed on your belly or your chest, and they may start rooting right away. Now rooting is when they open their mouth wide and they're kind of just looking around for the breast. If you see your baby rooting, feel free to put them right on there. Now this first latch and latches in general are important. When your baby's mouth is open, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and bring your baby to the breast and you're gonna to wanna to get as much in there as possible. So you wanna get your entire nipple and as much of your areola as possible, not just your nipple. If you only get your nipple in there, you are not gonna feel very good, that's gonna hurt. So you may feel a little bit like you're jamming your breast into their mouth, but don't worry, they love it. <laughs> That is gonna actually help your baby get as much colostrum as possible. Now, if your baby isn't necessarily rooting, but after a little bit of skin to skin, you wanna go ahead and try breastfeeding, here's a couple things to try. You can kind of rub your breast along their cheek. A lot of times that will make them open their mouth and turn towards your breast. You can rub your breast along their top lip. If they're just so cozy and sleepy, go ahead and try undressing them. A lot of times that will wake them up a little bit and make them hungry. Try some skin to skin. Sometimes your scents will wake them up and make them hungry. Once they are on the breast and they are sucking, you can tell they're sucking because you feel a tug and you see their cheeks moving. It might feel a little weird at first. When you are just starting to lactate, it might even not feel great, but don't worry. Breastfeeding, once you're doing it right and doing it for a while, it should not hurt. So once you feel baby sucking and see by their cheeks that they're sucking, go ahead and leave them on there. You don't wanna break that latch. And honestly, that first latch is so important that heck, leave them on there till they come off themselves. And you may have no idea if they are getting anything at all, but you know what? They probably are. And that colostrum is so good for their belly. A lot of times it will help them have their first dirty diaper, which can prevent jaundice or help get rid of some jaundice. When you just have colostrum, you may have a hard time deciphering when your breast is empty, when it's full, that kind of thing. So if the baby comes off by herself, go ahead and switch her to the other breast. Otherwise, maybe just switch her after like 15 or 20 minutes and move her to the other breast. After it's been a few days and your breast feels empty, then you may know to switch the baby if they haven't come off by themselves. If you need to unlatch your baby, don't just try to pull them off, that will not feel good. You can kind of slip your finger into the side corner of their mouth and that will un unlatch them and then you can go ahead and switch breasts. After a couple days of colostrum, your milk will likely come in. And so this is actually transitional milk. That basically just means there's a little colostrum in it, so it's still maybe a little bit yellowish, but there's gonna be a lot more of it. With my first baby, all of the sudden, kind of, my boobs got really hard and leaky and thick and like, oh my goodness, we were like, okay, my milk's in. <laughs> but my second baby, it was a little less traumatic. All of a sudden, while I was nursing, my baby just started like gurgling milk and I was like, okay, my milk is in. <laughs> I could also hand express a little bit and I could just tell my breasts were a lot more full and I had more milk. When your milk comes in, you may find yourself leaking a lot. You can just use a nursing pad on the breasts you're not using or you can use one of those Haka silicone milk collectors and put that on the other breast. That's a great way to start a milk stash and it's also a really great way to increase your supply if you're looking to do that. When you're nursing, most lactation consultants will recommend that you have the baby completely drain one breast before switching them to the other one, and then if they don't completely empty the other one, just start with that other one the next nursing session. I've always had a bit of an oversupply, so what I do is I try to switch the baby about halfway through for my own comfort so that my second breast isn't super over engorged and uncomfortable. So if I know my baby normally nurses from 10 to 15 minutes, I maybe switch her at the seven minute mark, if that makes sense. So you do you. While you're nursing, you wanna be as comfortable as possible. Maybe have like a nursing station where you can watch Netflix, where you have a drink and some snacks. Have your nursing pillow there so you're not like leaning forward so you're able to be super comfortable while you're nursing. You want it to be a relaxing, special time. 
Newborns usually have longer nursing sessions. You might be doing 10 minutes each breast, but when they get to the three month mark, a lot of times they get a lot more efficient and maybe are just doing five minutes each breast and you know, that's fine. If you're exclusively nursing, there's a few different ways to tell if your baby is getting enough. Make sure they're having enough wet and dirty diapers. That's an easy way to tell. Also, if you wanna get a baby scale, or actually my baby bath will weigh my baby, you can weigh your baby before you nurse them, and then you weigh your baby after you nurse them. And if you weigh your baby before, and then weigh them after, and they've gained three ounces, they had three ounces worth of milk. So that's just a great way to know. There are several different nursing positions that you can try. So this is kind of the traditional cradle. This is called football holds. And it can be great if your baby's just not wanting to latch down. For some reason this holds just, it makes them go for it. And then you can also, while laying down, you can put baby like this. Just make sure not to fall asleep because you don't want to roll on them. If the baby is just not latching, you can maybe just try a different position and see if that works. There are several different ways to tell if your baby is hungry. So we talked about rooting, that's when their mouth is open, maybe turn to the side, they're clearly looking for some booby, they're clearly hungry. Another way to tell is if they're kind of like rubbing their head into your chest, that's one way. If their fists are real clenched, sometimes that means they're hungry. If their hands are kind of going into their mouth, that can mean they're hungry. If they're just in general fussy, that can mean they're hungry, maybe go ahead and offer a feeding. In the beginning, you're gonna wanna feed your baby at least every two to three hours, but I am saying at least for a reason. You're gonna wanna feed your baby on demand. Newborn breastfed babies need to be fed on demand. They have these tiny little bellies. You don't always know how much they got. And so go ahead and offer a feeding if they're doing any of the hunger signs we just talked about, even if it's only been an hour, even if it's only been 30 minutes. There is something called cluster feeding, which a lot of babies will do in the newborn stage, particularly in the evenings where they're just gonna wanna be on the breast quite a bit for comfort, for loading up on milk before a long night stretch, that kind of thing. And so it's totally normal, nothing to worry about. Just go ahead and put that baby on the boob. If you're having some nipple discomfort, like some cracked nipples or something, feel free to use a nipple cream. I really like the Earth Mama nipple balm. That one's pretty good. Uh, there are also nursing shields. If you're really just having a really tough time with cracked nipples or something and you need them to heal, you can use those for a little bit. So they're just silicone things that go over your nipple, but your baby can still breastfeed. Nursing strikes are something that can happen and it's when the baby all of a sudden won't nurse when they normally would, or they're just having a really hard time nursing when normally it's fine. This happened to me with my daughter, Everly. One time she had an ear infection and she was just not nursing well for like a day and a half. And I ended up giving her some pumped breast milk. So if you have to do that, it's not the end of the world. Don't freak out. Just make sure you pump every time your baby is getting a bottle and always offer them the breast first. Try to get them back on the boob whenever they can. And a lot of times they'll work their way through it. Let's talk about pumping. So a good way to start building up a freezer stash is to just use a silicone milk collector a couple times a day on the breast you're not nursing on, catch a little let down maybe in the morning because most of us have the most milk in the morning. So that's a good time to use it. And that's helped a lot of us just start a nice little freezer stash in there. Now, if you're going back to work soon, you want a bigger freezer stash or in general, you just want to be pumping for your supply. I would suggest pumping maybe once a day right after your morning breastfeeding session. So you'll probably get the most then. And also if you pump right after your nursing session, you're less likely to mess up your next nursing session. They should have plenty by then. If you're going back to work or just have to be away from your baby for a period of time, I would suggest pumping once for every single time they're eating. So if they are eating every two hours if you can pump every two hours if they're eating about every three hours if you can pump every three hours my baby eats three times while i'm at work so i pump three times during my work day so for me that's 9 a.m noon and 2 30 p.m if you're missing pumps consistently you will likely see a drop in your supply it is totally normal to be a just enough pumper so to pump just enough for what your baby needs so if your baby is normally taking three or four ounce bottles and you are pumping that that rocks. Don't worry about it. You're doing great. I know we see a lot of people with these giant freezer stashes or these huge oversupplies, but don't stress out about that. A just enough pumper is perfect. When you're pumping, you're going to make your most amount of milk in the morning. So it's normal for your first pump of the day to be that grand slam one and your last pump of the day to be a little less, but don't worry about it. We're all like that. 
Did you wake up from your nap right when Mama was filming a video? Wanna play right here? There may be times when you feel like you need to increase your milk supply, maybe babies being a little fussy after feedings, so you're not pumping as much. A few different things can affect your milk supply. If you get your period back, it's normal to see a dip while you have your period. If you've been sick and you've been dehydrated, it's normal to see a dip. If baby's been sick and maybe she hasn't been nursing as well, you may see a dip. Maybe you've had to miss a few pumps because you've had a busy work week. All of these things can cause your milk supply to drop. And the best thing to do is just to keep nursing and to keep pumping. But if you wanna get your supply back up more quickly, I would suggest doing maybe a power pump a couple days. So that means once a day to 20 minutes of pumping, 20 minutes off, 10 minutes of pumping, 10 minutes off, 10 minutes of pumping, 10 minutes off. So that will actually really help boost your supply. You can also try pumping after a couple different breastfeeding sessions and you'll likely be able to get it back up. Okay, that will be it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or need any advice, feel free to leave a comment in the comments. I try to respond whenever I can. Please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in my next one.